what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you happen to be new, my name is Dana. I'm so glad you all decided to stop by and hang out. Today's video is going to be kind of like an unboxing try on of CoverGirl's new spring 2018 collection. I did receive this massive box as PR and I thought it'd be fun to kind of just go through the products with y'all and try them on. So if you are interested in this look and seeing some of their new goodies, we have a drawer full of face stuff. We have a drawer full of eye stuff. We have like, I think two drawerfuls of lip products. So if you guys are interested in seeing some swatches and demos, just stay tuned. So I think for today, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with my brows. This here was the eye drawer. So we have four brow pencils as well as brow pomades. And I think we're gonna go in with both of them. So starting off with the brow pencil, this is the Easy Breezy Brow Micro Fine and Define Pencil. These are going to retail for $6.99. Now I'm not sure if that's going to vary from store to store because I know sometimes like Walgreens and CVS can be more expensive than let's say Target or Walmart. So out of the four shades, I think I'm gonna go ahead and start off with 710 Soft Brown. I feel like in most brow pencils, even like the Anastasia Brow Wiz, I believe both the L'Oreal and Maybelline ones, I almost always go for soft brown and medium brown. So this is the second to darkest shade. And yeah, it's looking like this color is going to be perfect for my brows. I actually have a tiny zit right inside my eyebrow. Those and ones that are like right on your lip line or in your nostril are the most painful. This one is like right here and I've already bumped it twice. It's not feeling very good, but I guess we'll just go ahead and work around it. So with my brows, I pretty much always start off with the line underneath first, just to kind of figure out the lining that I want. I pretty much just follow my natural brow. The main areas that I like to focus on are right up here, just because I find that area to be really sparse. And then I pretty much always go in and extend my tail. And then just whipping it around to the spoolie side, I'm just going to brush that out a little bit. And then next we will move on to the pomade. So there's pretty much not much of a brow, and then the brow pencil so far, no complaints and nothing really that's like super standout compared to other brow pencils that I've used, but I mean, $6.99, it's working pretty well. Okay, next up we have the Easy Breezy Brow Sculpt and Set Brow Pomades. It looks like we have the four same shades again, although on the bottom, it doesn't have the actual brow shade name, but just kind of comparing the shades, I'm guessing that this one is soft brown. You have this little built-in brush, and then under the cap, you have the actual pomade, um, just right off the bat, I feel like this eyebrow brush is way too flimsy. Honestly, I don't think I'm even going to bother with that just because I can tell I'm not going to like it. I like a shorter, stiffer brush just for easier control. So for that, I'm going to grab this one. I'm pretty sure this is actually an Anastasia brush, but just for side-by-side -side comparison, see how the bristles on this one are much stiffer, whereas these are less dense and just kind of move around too much. I feel like that's gonna give me a sloppy brow. I'm just going to lightly kind of stroke this over right over the pencil portion, just since I know I don't have any hair here, there's not really anything for the brow pencil to like really hold on and last throughout the day. Whereas I feel like if I kind of apply some of this pomade on top, it'll really lock it into Place. And then I will kind of use a little bit on the under portion of my brow just to really kind of define it. The color seems to match perfectly with the brow pencil. Let's see if it blends out nicely. It does. It's nice because it's not too creamy and it's not too stiff either. Sometimes when you get a pomade that's too creamy, you almost kind of get that weird skipping effect. This one does seem to be applying pretty evenly. Now, obviously I do have the pencil underneath too. I think the color and the formula is pretty good. I need to clean up. So for eyeshadow, they included these three palettes here. First up, we have the, just kidding, this one, the True and Naked Smoky Palette. In here you have eight shades. It looks like a majority of them are shimmers except for three. And then we have two of the Katie Cat palettes, which I have to say the packaging on these, or I guess like the actual product, how they're stamped with these adorable cat faces is too cute. They have these chubby cheeks. I love them. All three retail for $9.99. It looks like we have a hot version and then a cool version. So I think we'll maybe just kind of go in and mix and match on everything. They also did include an eye primer. This is the CoverGirl Lid Lock Eyeshadow Primer. It retails for $7.99. It looks like it has a doe foot applicator. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop some of this right onto 
my lids. It's always nice to have more options at the drugstore for an eye primer. Honestly, the only one that I can think of right off the top of my head is the one from L'Oreal. That one has been out forever. Honestly, I think I used that one before I ever used the Urban Decay Primer Potion. I think it's called like Decrease or Crease something. It comes like kind of in an hourglass shape container. Ooh, I can tell that I'm going to like this primer. It's setting, but it still has a subtle tacky base. So I can tell it'll really like latch onto whatever shadows that I am going to be applying. Now, whenever I take a glance at these three palettes, I'm only seeing one option for a matte brow bone shade and it's in the smoky palette. So I'm going to take a little bit of this shade here and just press this right under my brows. In fact, I think I'm gonna use this color to kind of set all over that way all the shades apply nice and even. We're not having too many matte options for the crease. For instance, everything in the cool palette is very shimmery. It looks like in the hot palette we have one, two, three. For my crease, I think I'm gonna go in with this shade here, but then on my lid we will go in with some color, but I don't really wanna use a shimmery shade on my crease. I am noticing quite a bit of kick up when I dip my brush in there, but I noticed that in a lot of shadows, so that's not really going to steer me away, but wow, the color is super pretty. Just a really nice, warm, toasty brown. I'm just going to take this in and blend it out. The blendability is really, really nice. Wow, I am impressed so far. I love this color so much. All right, once that is blended, I wanna go in with a little bit of a deeper shade before we go in with a color. So I'm gonna use a smaller brush if I can find one. This is the Sigma E25 blending brush. So in that same, whoa, we have a lot of kick up here. In the same warm palette, just because I do want one more kind of like matte shade, I'm gonna go in with this darker brown here. Okay, I'm just gonna play some of this right into the inner corner, or not inner corner, outer corner. This one, it looks like it needs a little bit more product, but it's one that you can build up. Just like that lash shadow, I'm not having any issues with blending or anything. I'm really impressed by this palette so far. I'm really excited to go in and use some of the shimmery shades. Now, for my actual lid, I'm loving this kind of like shimmery, rosy tone shade here, but when I feel it, it feels super creamy, but swatched, it kind of looks like it's a little sheer. But I wanna make sure that it really pops, so I may go in with something just to create a little bit of a base. I think I'm gonna find some sort of drugstore cream shadow base. Otherwise, that just doesn't have enough kickoff and payoff to it. So so I'm not quite sure how, but I somehow managed to lose the entire clip of where I was speaking about what I was doing. So first up, just to really amplify the shadow, I'm going in with a Smoky Plum Cream Shadow Stick. This one is from Prestige Cosmetics. Then just using my finger, I'm going in to gently blend the color out. Then taking just a stiff lid shader brush, I'm spritzing it with a little bit of the setting spray and then dipping back into that shadow from the Katie Cat palette and pressing it right on top of the cream shadow. Now I think I am gonna go in with a little bit of liquid liner. This is their new Get In Line Liquid Eyeliner. It comes in five shades. I'm going to be using the shade Major Matte Black. It does look like you have a nice felt tip. It doesn't look too flimsy or too thick. So I'm just going to go in and apply this right along my lash line. It seems to have a nice little bend to it too, so it's just doing a good job of kind of like following the curve of my eye shape. Now, I'm definitely someone who is not very good at liquid liner. I don't wear it that often. I see so many people who can just like do the perfect wing in one sweep. I feel like I'm better at just going through and doing little strokes, but I feel like the brush holds the perfect amount of product to where it doesn't get like goopy or runny. I really appreciate kind of like the length and the stiffness of this felt tip. Sometimes you find ones that are too long or too short or they're too flimsy. <laughs> I feel like this is going in a complete other direction. Um, but the thickness of this one was just right to where it was just really easy to hold a steady line along the length of my eye. I'm not sure what we were just reviewing, but 
There you go. So in this one, there's several products that I'm really excited to try, especially these here, the Vitalist Glow products. These just look so nice. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with the Vitalist Go Glow Luminizing Lotion. We have two shades here. One is in Daybreak, the other one is in Sunkiss. It says that these retail for $8.99. They're infused with vitamins E, B3, and B5. It's a lightweight moisturizer with light reflecting pigments. Gives your skin a naturally hydrated, luminous glow. If you guys caught my everyday makeup routine, then you know I prep my skin with a million different primers and I love also adding some sort of like glowy base. So this definitely sounds right up my alley. We may go ahead and just mix both. First up on my face is Daybreak. It has, oh, I can't figure out what that smell is. It definitely has a scent. I'm just mixing those two together now and I'm just going to press this right into my skin. So this product definitely does apply just like a lotion. It doesn't have any sort of like silicone feel or anything like that. It seems like it's just kind of setting. I'm not feeling any sort of like tackiness or anything like that. And it just gives you a really nice subtle glow. I'm liking it. All right, just to keep this a one brain look, I know I did cheat by using that, um, what's it called? The cream shadow pencil, but for the most part, I do want to keep it one brand. So for my foundation, I am going to be going in with the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir Foundation. I have mine in the shade 725 Buff Beige. All right, so there is my foundation. And honestly, the more that I look at this, I'm like, shoot, why don't I wear this more often? It is a very just like, healthy looking glowy foundation. Okay, now moving on to concealer, we have the new Vitalist Healthy Concealer. They send over six shades. It says that it's a vitamin infused formula that brightens your complexion for a fresh, healthy look. It's full coverage, soft brush concealer pen glides on smoothly and improves skin texture. I like the sounds of that. I think I'm gonna go in with light medium. It is one of those crank type of products. Wow, that one was actually much faster than many of them that I've used in the past. Okay, so we do have a little brush tip applicator. I am just going to go in and apply some of this right here onto my under eyes. I definitely need some brightness under there. I think I may have gotten a little bit excited with that crank mechanism and squeezed out a bit too much. Okay, so now taking the opposite end of this sponge, I'm just going to begin dabbing this into the skin. I feel like it's looking kind of sheer. It's like added some brightness in there, but I don't think I'd call this concealer full coverage, and that was one of the claims. I do feel like I'm getting some sort of like corrective um, brightening quality, but not actual coverage because I have lots of freckling right under this area, and I can definitely still see all of it. Um, so there is a quick look at what the concealer looks like. I am going to go in and add some more. I think I'm gonna go in with the Urban Decay All Nighter because it's just not giving me the coverage that I like. It's definitely more of a natural concealer. Like if you were just going for a day-to-day -day look, you had some like sallowness under the eyes, dullness, and you were just wanting to brighten that up, that concealer would work, especially if you're someone who doesn't want the coverage. But um, I feel like if you're using a concealer, most people do want the coverage. Otherwise, like what's the point of adding an additional product onto your face? So I am gonna go in and grab a second concealer. Next up, I'm going in with the Vitalist Healthy Powder. One thing that's confusing me is that it's only available in four shades. I don't know if they just meant four shades that came in this box. I'm really hoping that's the case because if it's only four shades in the whole line, then this is the lightest shade and this is the darkest shade. Clearly that cannot be right. I'm like really hoping for CoverGirl's sake that they meant like just for it in this box. All right, so I'm not going to set my whole face just because I feel like this powder, it has a subtle, subtle tackiness, but I still wanna go in with a highlighter on top and I don't really wanna put a powder underneath that. So I'm really only going to set like my forehead and maybe a little bit of my chin with this. I'm going in with a shade Buff Beige. It does come with a sponge and a mirror within the compact. It says it's a lightweight formula that reduces shine for natural looking flawless skin. The powder delivers moisture and diffuses the look of imperfections without ever looking cakey. We shall be the judge of that. So just right between my brows, I'm gonna do some powder. And it does feel really nice, soft and silky. And then right kind of here around my smile line, just so we don't get creasing later. 
Now to test out these highlighters. I have been so curious about these. So these are the Vitalist Healthy Glow Highlighters. They come in six shades. It says that it illuminates your most beautiful features. It's a silky, blendable cream formula in intensely luminous shades. I have, oh, it's a little bit different than what I thought. In the packaging, it looks like it's gonna be a very kind of like jelly-like formula. This one is in number two, so I'm guessing this is Moonbeam. Okay, this one does feel squishier than some of the others. All right, I think I'm just gonna go in um, with my sponge and just kind of press it in here. Or maybe we will try with my finger first. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab some on my finger, tap off a little bit of the excess and just, whoop, that may have been a little bit much. Okay, now I feel like I can get my sponge to kind of press it in. Oh yeah, that's pretty. I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of this guy here. This one is in the shade number three. Looks like it has a little bit more of a bronzy look to it and I'm gonna concentrate that more here, right on my cheek. Taking that first shade again, I'm just going to apply some of this right down the bridge of my nose and then right onto my cupid's bow. So if you're one of those people that do not like the intensity of like the um, Becca Skin Perfectors like Champagne Pop or Opal, anything like that, if you're looking for something a little bit more subtle and especially if you have dry skin, I think you would really like these. Pretty good. I have to say after applying lashes, I'm loving this eye look. That purple shadow was so pretty. All right, but now we are moving on to lips. In the lip drawer, they sent like a ton of the Katie Cat lip glosses, which we are going to be trying out one of these, as well as the CoverGirl Melting Pout Matte Liquid Lipstick. These come in 12 shades, as that they deliver color so hot, it's melted. These liquid matte lipsticks give you a high impact, super rich color with a lightweight matte finish. They are infused with nourishing ingredients and they glide on smoothly. Let's mix these two. I'm gonna mix Coral Chronicles and Champagne Showers together. Let's go ahead and start off with Coral Chronicles. Um, I didn't bring a lip liner, so we're just gonna do this without a lip liner. It just looks like it has a traditional, actually, let me scrape this off. Does it kind of have? No, it's just a typical doe foot applicator. I am not really smelling any sort of scent whatsoever. The texture reminds me of a lighter version of the NYX Soft Matte Lip Creams. They still kind of have that whipped texture, but they don't feel quite as moussey as the NYX ones. I actually really do like this color. It is slowly starting to dry. It's not feeling like tightening or anything on the center of the lips, which is nice. I feel like that's how you almost always know it's gonna be one of those crumbly products. It's whenever you notice a matte liquid lips, it kind of starts to like tighten up and bunch up in the center of the lips. This color is pretty, but I do wanna mix one little layer of, oh no, was it ballerina? No, champagne showers. So I'm just gonna mix a little bit of this color. Oh yeah, that combo is pretty. This just has a little bit more of like a peachy nude in it. Okay, so there is the lip combo. I think I'm gonna give it about like two more minutes and see if it's transfer proof once it fully dries down. I'm still not noticing any sort of tightening or any like uncomfortable feeling, so that's always nice. I think it's dry for the most part. Let's give it the kiss test. Yep, that is completely transfer proof. Okay, I do wanna add just a little bit of gloss in the center. I don't know, I've just been more of a gloss girl lately. This is one of the Katy Perry Katy Cat glosses. The packaging of this, look at this. It's just this chubby little cat head on the top. It's so cute. This one is in the shade Cantaloupe. So, mm, this one does have a little bit of a bakery scent, nothing too strong. Um, that's not what I thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more sheer with less gloss. I just want a little bit of that, not... Okay, I feel like on top of this, this is more just like a glittery coat than an actual like glossy finish. So maybe I will just leave it. Actually, you know what? I am going to choose, I just want a clear gloss, just a little bit in the center because that's just been the look that I have been liking lately. I just feel like it gives your lips more of a pouty look. So the clear gloss on top isn't really disrupting the formula, so that's always nice with a matte liquid lipstick. All right, so here is the final look using those CoverGirl products. I do want to do one more little mist 
of this setting spray. I have to say, I really do like this. Just to give you all a quick rundown of the products that I thought really did stick out, I was really impressed by these palettes, at least the shades that I've used so far, especially for a drugstore palette. palette these two mattes down here, those performed great, and those would make great everyday colors. Um, I did end up using a little bit of this purple shade too, just to smoke out my lower lash line some more. Oh, and I almost forgot to tell y'all, um, we'll go ahead and add just a little bit more because why not? I actually went in this palette with this shade here that I use as my inner corner highlight. That is why my cheeks are glowing a little bit more than just with that first highlighter we used because I just took a little bit of this and just dusted this right here and that made the prettiest highlight. So this palette specifically, this is the hot one, right? I just think these would make great everyday colors for a lot of us. And then this palette, I do need to play with more because the only shade that I really used in here was this one, which once I had some sort of base, I think that color is beautiful. I really, really like it. Also, the liquid liner in the matte black, I am loving. I have super watery eyes too. In fact, already while filming, the inner corner of this eye, I don't know if it's just the pollen in the air or what has been watering, and I thought, for sure this was going to smudge everywhere i'm not sure i don't think it was marketed as waterproof but i mean i'm not really seeing anything shifting or going crazy bleeding all over my eye so these two products i really do like the powder thing i, I did end up checking ulta and i believe target and that just kind of really turns me off because even the lightest shade wasn't light enough for many girls and the deepest shade definitely was not deep enough so that is kind of like meh. I do like the setting mist. Obviously this is something I'll have to see if my makeup really does stay locked and loaded throughout the day but I enjoy the scent and I think it does have a really nice mist to it. Um, The concealer, like I said earlier, I think if you are more of a natural makeup wearer and you're not really wanting a ton of coverage, that definitely did brighten up the under eyes but it just didn't give me the kind of coverage that I like for a concealer. I like a little bit more of a glow from the highlighter but on a no makeup makeup day I think that product would be great. I also really do like the eye primer especially for I believe it was $6.99 or $7.99. I will have all the products linked below and I'm sure I had annotations throughout the video. I really hope you guys found this video helpful. If you enjoyed I would appreciate it if you gave me a thumbs up. Also don't forget to subscribe that way you guys can be notified for all of my future uploads. As always thank you all so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!